Good evening. Welcome to the Tasmanian Premier League Football Show. My guests tonight are Julius Ross from South Hobart and Richard Evans, the new Coaching and Development Manager of Football Federation Tasmania. Good evening, Julius. Hey, Walter. How are you going? Well, thank you. And welcome, Richard. Thanks very much, Walter. Uh, our first game tonight is the Tilford Zebras against Glenorchy Knights game. Tilford Zebras are in second place and they needed to win this to stay in touch with South Hobart. Were you nervous for this game, Julius, watching it? Um, I thought that it, was, it would have been good if uh, Glenorchy Knights could have snatched a, snatched a point, which would have helped us out. Um, but unfortunately, the Zebras got, uh, got, part, got over the line at the end. Um, so yeah, that didn't really help our uh, title hopes out. We would have been good to go six points clear if they'd uh, dropped points here. The Knights took the lead when uh, the Zebras goalkeeper parried the shot. It rebounded to Hugeslut, who scored. Was there any feeling of pressure on the rest of the team the following day when you took the field against the Lions, Julius? Um, <clears throat> yeah, definitely. I think because they'd uh, taken the lead uh, on goal difference at the top of the ladder, there was definitely uh, the pressure there to get three points. And um, even though our game, it was pretty hard fought, it was very good to get the three points and get back on top of the, the table, definitely. Th there's an equaliser from Tilford Zebras from a central defender, Richard. Yeah. I spoke to one of the lads um, yesterday actually and he said that the um, strikers were a bit negligent in the duties and the defenders had to come forward and show them what to do, which is always good, being an ex-defender. As it turned out, both the Zebra's central defenders scored the goals, which got them out of the fire. They were 1-0 down, of course, and uh, headers by Andrew Taliga and uh, by the other central defender, Henry Fagg, gave the Zebras a 2-1 victory. It put them on top briefly on goal difference prior to the next day's game between South Hobart and Kingborough. You won that game 1-0, uh, Julius. What did you think of the match? Um, I thought it was a pretty, pretty tough match uh, down at uh, Lightwood Park. Um, uh, the, the Lions really sort of, uh, you know, tried pretty hard to get the... Uh, get the points and uh, get an upset. Um, they're fighting relegation, so yeah, it was pretty pretty tough down there. Now, Richard, you've seen some games in Tasmania now. You've only been here a brief time. What are your initial impressions? Oh, they're good. Uh, very pleasing, actually. Um, one of the first tasks I've got is to get this youth squad together to play um, the four games against the A-League youth teams. <coughs> and it's really been good, very, um, very pleasing, seeing the standard. And you mentioned that young lad that got the winner for the uh, Zebras, young Henry Fagg. He looks a very accomplished player. I, I saw him play in that North East South from the grandstand at Hobart, that Launceston, sorry. And he looked very, very composed. And when you see him face to face, he's just a young kid. So that was good that he can play with that composure and um, self-assurance. Hoogersloot was unlucky there, a few clips back, uh, Julius, heading against the crossbar. Oh, it would have been nice if you'd uh, got that goal and got the equaliser. It would have uh, helped us out, definitely. Well, the Zebras held on to win 2-1 and that took them to the top on goal difference until the following day. A very flat performance tonight after last week's performance. Um, Three points is three points. I'm not happy with the performance, but I'm happy with the with the win and the three points. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. A win's a win. Well, we probably had the better of the first half. I think they came out and hit us pretty hard at the start of the second, and we probably finished off the better. So I mean, we had our chances, but didn't take them. And a couple of um, silly little free kicks sort of give them the opportunity to have a couple of free kicks and score goals. Oh, look, I think a draw probably would have been a fair result at the end of the day. It's always a bit hard to tell when you're playing as well exactly what's going on. But I'd say from shots and that sort of thing, I'd probably presume a draw would be a fair result today. Let's move now to our second game of the evening, which is third-placed Hobart Olympic against the bottom side Taruna at the Athletic Centre. Taruna were already relegated, but Olympic had everything to play for as they needed to win to stay in touch with the leaders and keep alive their very slim hopes of snatching the title. Ian Colhoun is the referee here. You've seen these sides play quite often, Julius. Um, 
Do you think Olympic are in with a chance too? Um, if they are in with a chance, it's a pretty slim chance. Um, we've got Taruna and Metro as our last two games and we're pretty confident we, we can get the three points in both of those matches. And I think Zebras have got uh, Eagles and another side that they'd expect to uh, get the maximum points. Um, so I think that Olympic probably are out of the title race at this stage. You might have the title on the platter then because you're playing the two relegated teams. Um, yes and no. I mean, we can't be too, too overconfident. Um, I think, yeah, like if we, if we go into these matches thinking it's all sewn up, then we, we could be in a bit of trouble if we do drop points because it's definitely not over yet. In this game, there were two goals by Michael Buellis and one by Carl Lazabal to give <coughs> Olympic their victory. Um, Richard, you've been to Taruna's home ground down near the river. What did you think of it, apart from it being cold? What, the ground or the yeah, game? Yeah, the ground. Um, in interesting setup. It's like it's been, a, been cut away in the side of the hill and you got sweeping away to the ocean. So I would imagine when the, um, the elements are cruel, it would be very difficult to play there. With that wind blowing uh, and, and the cold as well. You have to play a high tempo game to keep warm. <laughs> it's quite a picturesque ground, though, and it's sad oh, to it's see beautiful. Taruna going down into the first division. Yeah, it's beautiful ground. With facilities really. like that. I believe we had a bit of a spectator problem there, Julius. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? <laughs> Were you surprised that Olympic won comfortably? Um, not really. I think they do have a pretty good squad this year and they've been going pretty well until recent weeks and I think they are more than capable of scoring a few goals past Taruna. You're a striker. What do you think of Michael Buellis' performance? I think he's had a pretty good season. I'm not sure how many uh, goals he's scored this year but I've seen quite a few on this show and he's scored some pretty spectacular strikes and he does well week in, week out. He's a hard worker so credit to him. There we have Olympic's first goal by Carl Lazabal to make it 1-1. Michael Buellis was the leading goal scorer last season. He hasn't had such a good season this time, but he still is amongst the goals, as you can see there. That puts them 2-1 in front. One of the smallest players on the field, but one of the most effective and one of the most deadly. Have you seen Olympic play this year, Richard? No, no. I thought the Markham was a bit slack for that first goal. I mean, the ball was played into him, he's on the edge of the six and no one moved. He had just, just a free shot. We see a very good goal coming up now, direct from a free kick. Uh, Buell has rifled that one in the top corner. The keeper didn't have a chance. What did you think of that one, Richard? Oh, it was well struck. I mean, if you get those right, no one's going to stop them. Looking at this angle, I mean, you can't really see how, how he had his wall set up, whether it was set correctly in his position, but putting the balls there, very hard to stop. And here we have another chance by Buellis. Julius, the keeper managed to deflect that one. Just wide there, he would have had his hat trick if you got that one. Yes. Taruna seemed really under pressure. Yeah, I think they've been under pressure. Uh, they just struck the woodwork there, um, Olympic again. They've been under pressure all year. I don't know. I think they've conceded 63 goals, so they've had it tough down up in the, up in the league this year. 